Postgres started supporting this in 9.5 on uh, okay. security. So it's basically just a filter you put on every table well, if you want, I mean, any table you like, that if, um, if, it return, if that policy returns like true, binary true, then it gets applied. So you just make policies. Um, so here's a, this is all reversible. I can like copy and paste this in Word, um, but creating and deleting roles. Uh, so uh, so for a brand new uh, evergreen database, you want to like start out by creating the database, adding the extensions, uh, and then uh, running it through the uh, EGDB config. Uh, th so for instance, uh, that loads all the sample. Um, right. Um, but you can run these policies. So I have these policies run against that. I also have them run against this, the big uh, 466 database I was talking about. Right. So um, I started by writing this uh, PL, PSQL uh, procedure that uh, creates, uh, it enables like role level security on every table. Okay. So you just uh, grant, so it just does add, sets up the grant and uh, <coughs> gives this uh, user, this user I'm calling S, S test yes. um, right here. Gives it access to everything right. yeah. that it needs yeah. access to. Um, it's uh, also only has like read only. Like here, I I only gave it read only access when I created the user. Um, okay, to, to read only on right. Okay, on everything. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you give it access to to do look at sequences and uh, privileges and the schemas and so. Um, Grant everything so it can enable real level security. Um, yes. So once you do that, you're starting out with just uh, making policies for any tables you want. Um, anything, so if you set, it's just a binary, I mean a Boolean. So if it's true, it returns every row. So for instance, on act, actor or unit, I wanted every everything. Um, um, same thing with permission group tree. and. Um, Asset copy location. I just wanted everything that wasn't deleted. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> so you can make these policies that just get whatever you want. So 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 the point of this, I've I've not studied ah, real level okay. security at all. I've heard the term. So the point of this is to exclude by, you know, basically an arbitrary filter. Well, include by an arbitrary filter. Actually, in, well, the include policy is you're allowed to see the the rows that meet these conditions. That I let you see under like like basically a where clause. Yeah, the policy is attached to a role, so you give a role to you give a policy to a role. Right. And that role can see rows that that policy that that pass that policy's condition. So I see. Okay. So it's adding uh, deleted equals false to the where clause of every. Every time a row is comes out of asset copy location for for S test for S the role S test right and so if you're you're S test you're logged in you can never see anything that doesn't match this goal right so okay. it's usually just for security but you can do what you want in those booleans so you can you can subset your data and and right. PG dump um, supports row level security if you put like a certain flag on on the PG dump. I suppose this is one way to deal with that org unit deletion A small database. So well, yeah. What do you, so what you're using this for is that is you're creating the policies to say just give me everything that's that relates to this 
the, these 10 org units and and uh, these 10 users, yeah, that right. kind of thing. That's right. One okay. So, so right, but that's he was doing modulus. He was like, row yes. Well, he's still got some of that going on there. Uh, but my point is, he's using this to uh, be able to do PG dump to get a small a, a snapshot, a small and internally self-consistent snapshot right. of the data. Right. You, you have to account for all the, the foreign key constraints. So you have to go every single t through every single table and uh, make sure that it respects foreign key constraints. So right, you, right. That's what I was just thinking about. So asset copy is um, currently a a little bit a little bit of a um, an issue because it doesn't actually have foreign keys uh, the, or other tables don't have foreign keys onto asset copy. We have the fake cor fake foreign keys. Are there are there some fake fields in, in asset copy? Well, no, there, there are fields on, so asset copy has a child table, serial mm -hmm. unit. Oh, right. And, you, and hopefully this will be addressed soon, but foreign keys can't flow, don't flow through um, to child right. tables. So here's how I did asset copy. I'm on account oh. for. Uh, yes, you know, deleted true. I wanted. I'd be my 60th copy. Yeah, mm -hmm. or deleted false. Um, and then I also wanted so call number in, so I had to get a by. So you've already got the subset of call numbers above, uh -huh. correct? Yeah. Okay. Does that make sense? I mean, it's right above. Mm -hmm. You got copy call numbers here. Yeah. So that record, bibli record entry, so yeah. that's above. Right. And so you've got a subset of bibs, <clears throat> and then these have to have active entries there and yeah. these have to have active active entries there is that kind of what you're doing yeah that's okay. one respect actor users so yeah that's above okay so it's a tree that get it's a policy tree that gets applied um, and you just have to account for every single relationship yeah hopefully i got them all but i don't well, know well course, if you can good. load it into if you can load the data into a, a properly uh, yeah, into a proper completely empty evergreen database then i've done that yeah then um, that's yeah, actually super cool because because really so like we what we've wanted for years internally because we don't need an actual copy of this we need what you're providing here basically like a, a smaller subset it doesn't need to be literally every page and literally every copy including deleted for everything since 2006 because right. that's what we've got right. <laughs> you know and, you know that's also even you know things that take on the tiny bit of uh, this approach uh, mm -hmm. you know, it makes it uh, looks like we make it much easier to do things like um, bring over uh, every table but uh, don't bother shipping all the auditor tables right and, right and, yeah and just dump. just don't give the user a policy that allows them to see that table yeah. so we're back um, to sloney days just kidding <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, so, logical replication is also yeah that's true of, uh, yeah that's true so. sure. <laughs> Had, do you are you at the point where you have like at the top you can set some variables in PSQL and and those are used throughout to do the math to say I want a I want a I want one tenth of the bibs one sixtieth of the circs uh, one half you of the org units you could do that but you have to think about what what tables to apply that to if you want well but if you have the numbers you can do, that's what I'm saying is like so you're using mod modulo to 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 do that do you think you could uh, replace the explicit yeah, this modulos <coughs> doing this explicit math in the in the uh, condition in the policies in the policy conditions with um, uh, with right. yeah with variables or uh, you know equations that use variables. I was thinking if you had like a, a script like a GUI that would let you pick all that, you could dump out exactly. Yeah, it would dump the policy the the. the the whole thing, right? Yeah. And you just run that SQL. And it's customizable in the GUI, so you could control exactly how much you want to dump out. You could make like your little mini concerto and that's super cool. It yeah. just needs to scramble the patron data. Yeah. That's that's the other that's the only piece that I would need to do to we have, have a have shareable kind of like data a set patron mini data really honestly if you're not if, if it doesn't work in Python, it won't work yet. Yeah. Yeah. Somewhere. I mean, I, know, I, feel like I mean, Mocha's is big enough that it's more like us, probably. And then, you know, and obviously, there's like uh, 
Um, especially like the more years you run, so that makes it more like us because we have just all this legacy data we're driving around forever. You know. Yes. Right. But I'll tell you what. Yeah. This is this is inspiring some other thoughts on uh, um, being able to using RLS to cut down on a lot of our rote required additional where clauses. Now, it, I will still have to decide whether we really want to do that because there are certainly times when you want to be able to get to deleted data mm -hmm. in the live system. But you would probably want to run your services as a different server than your super user that you're not using a PSQL. Well, well what, it, what I mean is like you want to be able to read the um, sort of the uh, Mark from a deleted oh, record so yes. you can undelete it, yes. that kind of thing. But there may be cases where we could trim down a lot of the extra rope mechanical boltons that we do to a lot of You want to see the dump command? Sure. And so this was a second PL, PSQL command I wrote that would, uh, worked on the config, config schema and it wrote so above enables relevant level security, but then you have to write the policies. So all these are policies that were written. This this function then writes policies for the config schema, and there were like four of them that needed deleted and customized after I did that. Um, but after that, and to dump it out, so that lists the policies. Um, so you just double like um, enable rollo enable roll level security and then down the, enable roll level security. And that's the, the user that had the roll level security. Oh, that's cool. And that's it. With the user S test being the user you connect as, do you even need to enable do you need to say enable row level security on PG dump? Because it should only export the the rows that that user the can, can see, see, right? That's um, what I thought. Or the, what the policy it? doesn't get applied except for that for that user, though. Right. So you're, well, you're, connect, you're connecting, connecting as that user, user, but but doing the, the capital U there. Oh, I see. Um, I think I think you do have to have enable role level security um, for some reason. People because PG dump wasn't written for it at first, and then they had to like add it to uh, make it work maybe, with it. Maybe it's not aware. And it was just to be extra sure that you might not be dumping. That, that's the main thing. It's a security thing. Without, without it has to apply those policies. Um, yeah, and usually it doesn't apply them. Now, if you apply those policies and then you go in as S test and and try to list the table sizes, you should get the miniaturized table yeah. sizes, right? Yeah. Even in the in, even in the full data set. Mm -hmm. If right. it depends on what. Yeah, it doesn't matter what user you are. The Right. If you do it as S test, you should be getting the small sizes even in the large database, because it, one of the things about RLS they try to do is limit um, side channel leaking, and that's okay. you know if you've got if there are ten rows in the table, but it, uh, that you can see with select splat, but there are uh, you know fourteen gigs of data, so this you can see that case. This will get the text disk space per table. That was also mm -hmm. on Galen's blog. So. Um. Oh, wait a minute. I go for mm, okay, eighty one gigs, forty one gigs for a real full rack. Yeah, mm -hmm. and this is after. It, so yeah. it's um, well, yeah, those aren't generated sizes, are they? But it would take forever <coughs> to return accurate values for those. Yeah, but, that may not be. But, but something they covered. But this space per schema. And that includes dead rows. That it isn't entirely a, a channel leak either. No, it's not. So this is the new database.
and those are the real new sizes oh, for the wow. tables. Yeah. That's super cool. Okay. Get, get so, out there, Ted. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna say if, if you don't, if you can share this somewhere, I'd love to play with it. Yeah, that's awesome. Where would I? So I'll put it on our over Mobius, and then you can Mobius GitHub. Is yeah. That where, is that where you post it? Yeah. Yeah, I already. I, I think I follow that on okay. GitHub. So. Well, I'll put it on. Does it have a place in the Evergreen GitHub? Is it like support scripts, or can we put it? Uh, I mean, there. I, you know, so sometimes it's examples, sometimes it's support scripts. I, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure the best spot. Um, so. You you could stick it at random. Stick it at random. Yeah, you could stick it at oh, random. Okay. Random. Or we could random we could repo. make a contrib repo for um for Mobius. Right. Probably the probably their GitHub is good enough. I was going to ask if you could share those because that that sounds really fascinating to me. I'd love. I've got one server. So like our database is like 500, 600 gigs. Yeah. And I've got another server where I have about 200 gigs of free space. So I'd love to be able to just pull out active stuff, get rid of deleted junk, libraries that aren't members anymore, and have a smaller database to use for testing. Hey, Jason, that sounds good. Random. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, random's just a collection of stuff. And there's a lot of fascinating things in there if no one's ever looked at it. So. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll we'll, uh, we'll see if we can get something out there for you to look at today. All right. Cool. Cool. I've got an anonymization script. I don't know if we've ever shared it. it it's pretty big and kind of specific to us. I think I'd have to look at it again. But we use it on our training server, and then I had another one where we were doing tests with a vendor, and we wanted to use real data, but mangle the names and stuff. So I've used it there too. Cool. Well, maybe we come up with some kind of a combination or something. I don't know. Yeah. But see, I'd love to dump production data and have a smaller set just to work with. Because oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's fine, but it's so small. Like, everything is fast. <laughs> yeah. And if you have if you have a larger data set, you can get a better feel for how things change. And that's a good point. The speed testing is a really good point. You could you could dump it in like increments. You could be like, give me ten percent, give me twenty percent, give me thirty percent, and then do a iterative test on each percentage of the database to see what the impacts of speed are on each one. That's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it kind of got noisy in here, so you're probably getting a lot of feedback. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll turn my mic off, but this this was really interesting. It's yeah, we'll, security, right? Yeah, it's called role level security. We'll post the branch at our. Uh, I think it just comes down to one one file. Yeah, I've got just, it's ready to put somewhere wherever. It's just one. It's basically a file of like notes and the commands. <laughs> All right, cool. I'll look for that. Okay. All right, cool.